you go back to the origins of video games, one must look first to early computing. In 1937, Alan Turing developed a theoretical computing machine, which provided the basic outline to what a computer algorithm could do. Then, during the 40s, the ideas of Turing were combined with earlier computer research and the processing power of electronic calculators to create electronic digital computers capable of running programs. The first program in the world was run on EDSAC, a computer owned by Cambridge in 1949. These programs inevitably progressed to game programs. Knots and Crosses, known to the modern world as Tic-Tac-Toe, was the first game to be played digitally, built in 1952 by Alexander Douglas. The game used cathode ray tubes, or CRT displays, a telephone dial for controls, and EDSAC for processing. Knots and Crosses, however, failed to qualify as an original video game because it was simply a recreation of a pre-existing pencil and paper game. The first true video game, Tennis for Two, was modeled after a real-world activity, but not identical to it. Created by William Higginbotham in 1958, it was played on an oscilloscope, an electronic device that analyzed voltage and displayed it as a graph. As computer technology advanced, Steve Russell invented the first video game for computer use, Space War, in 1962. Five years later, in 1967, the first video gaming system, the Brown Box, was designed by Ralph Baer. Unfortunately, the games of the time were not particularly successful or widespread, and this pattern held true for the first arcade game, Computer Space, created by Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney in 1971. Ralph Baer made a reappearance in 1972, designing the first commercially available home gaming system, the Odyssey, backed by Magnavox. The Odyssey enjoyed moderate success, yet still was not seeing the success that later video games had, but it set the stage for what would be the video game revolution and the golden age of video games. Ultimately, the mass popular growth of video games, followed shortly by the rapid development and advancement, led to increased interest and investment in the technology in general, as well as the creation and expansion of a multi-billion dollar new media industry. However, Along with video games came new concerns over the impact of graphic violence and video game addiction. The revolution began with a game which is now a household name, Pong. Pong was invented in 1972 by Al Alcorn, who was an engineer working for the fledgling company Atari, founded by Nolan Bushnell. By the end of the revolution, over 19,000 Pong machines had been sold. Following Pong, Atari remained at the cutting edge of the video game technology for over a decade. During that time, Atari released groundbreaking games and gaming systems including Tank in 1974, the home version of Pong in 1975, and the Atari 2600 in 1977, which sold over 30 million units. Atari's huge success drew attention from all around the world, causing an uprising of Pong clones from hordes of would-be millionaires. However, this influx of Pong clones was crucial in, if not the key cause, of the upcoming video game crash of 1977. The crash of 1977 was a low point of the revolution, during which many companies abandoned the home console market, leaving only Atari and Magnavox standing. Even they took significant losses. Atari's losses, however, were eventually overcome by the success of the Atari 2600, which itself was only fueled by the release of a groundbreaking game, the same game that ultimately ended the crash and initiated the golden age of arcade gaming. This game was the iconic Space Invaders, created by Taito in 1978. The golden age of arcade games that Space Invaders had initiated had no definite time period, yet it is generally described as containing 1982 and 1983. During this time, arcade game sales and profits soared as they became part of the culture and more and more prevalent in restaurants and arcades throughout the country. The Japanese company Nintendo, piloted by Hiroshi Yamaguchi, struck gold during this new age with the advent of Donkey Kong, designed by Shigeru Miyamoto, and was released in 1981. Another memorable hit of the golden age was Tetris, coming from Russia in 1984, invented by Alexei Pachanov. The Golden Age ultimately ended in the same ashes that it arose from, an industry crash. The second low point can be traced back to multiple causes, especially the excess of consoles, each with their own set of independent games on the market. 
Another cause was due to Atari overproducing two consoles games that it expected to be big hits. The early arcade hit, Pac-Man, and the game version of the movie E.T. The crash eventually ended with the success of next generation home consoles. These new consoles had improved graphics, better games, lower prices, and increased general availability. Nintendo was a significant part of this new home gaming revolution with their Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES console, developed in 1985. Games like Super Mario Bros. released in 1985, and The Legend of Zelda, released in 1986, cemented the NES's popularity and success. The generation of consoles could be considered the last major jump in gaming and gaming systems. Since this revolution, the industry has been focused on further development of consoles, graphics, and games, building off the premise of the classics. The economic, scientific, social, and political reactions to this revolution prove the vast impacts and repercussions the video game revolution has had on modern society. The economic reaction, which was, in a way, part of the revolution, can be seen in the massive profits produced by the industry during and after the revolution, as well as in the number of jobs and companies that arose. In 1980, the revenue generated from quarter-operated machines alone was $2.8 billion, or around $7.7 .7 billion when accounting for inflation. The hit games of the era, Space Invaders and Pac-Man, both sold over 350,000 cabinets. Over the years, the new industry has generated hundreds of billions of dollars. Yet, even beyond the stats, the creation of an in almost entirely new industry has immeasurable other economic impacts. Furthermore, these massive profits and other economic impacts carried into the scientific reaction, simply because the public demand for video games led to a private interest in developing the technologies to fuel them. This new demand from the industry for parts ultimately assisted in the technological uprising of the 1990s. The scientific reaction can also be linked to the social reaction, as the revolution created a generation interested and involved with the development of computer sciences and technology through video games. Many teenagers who played games at arcades in the 70s went on to become computer programmers, software and hardware developers, and engineers in the 80s and 90s, and the same is true for later generations. Today's developers and programmers grew up in the arcades, playing the games of the revolution. The main impacts of the social reaction, which was also part of the revolution, can first be seen in the sheer popularity of video games. Though it took decades of development from those archaic games of the 50s, once the revolution started, video games quickly became a cultural icon, and today, 71% of people between the ages of 6 and 49 have played video games. However, with increasing popularity, came increasing concerns over potentially negative impacts of video games. A large focus of this was on whether or not one could be addicted to video games, and what percentage of gamers were addicted. For example, a 1994 study found that 6% of the gamers were pathological players, based off revised criteria for pathological gambling. Furthermore, a more recent 2003 study showed that addicted adolescent gamers were more likely to have lower grades, spend more time playing video games, and more likely to be in physical fights. The correlation with such violence was and continues to be a large concern with video games. A perfect example of this can be seen with the controversy that followed the 1999 Columbine High School tragedy, where many people pointed to the intense graphical violence of video games that the shooters played as a cause for their violence. These social concerns led to the little visible political reaction and reform that has occurred due to the video game revolution. In 1994, Senate hearings were held to address the increasing detail and level of violence in video games. In order to prevent repressive government censorship, the industry worked together to eventually create the Entertainment Software Rating Board, or ESRB. This group provided, and continues to provide, video game ratings to give a better idea of what material is inappropriate to younger audiences. In conclusion, the short period of extreme growth after the introduction of Pong demonstrated the essence of the revolution with the mass popular growth of video games. This led to a myriad of social, economic, and political reactions and reforms with the popular culture of video games, the creation of a new industry, and concerns over video game violence ultimately leading to a government-supported rating system. The revolution was unquestionable, the reaction incredibly varied, and the reform completely necessary.